Hello. In this video, I want to show you how you can write a computer program to sample from the joint probability mass function. As you have learned from my previous video, we can display the joint probability mass function for the pair of random variables capital X and capital Y in a table as shown here. The headers for the columns in this table are the various values the random variable capital X can take, while the headers for the rows are the various values the random variable capital Y can take. The body of the table then holds the values from the joint probability mass function, i.e. the probabilities that the random variable capital X is equal to the value in the column header and the random variable capital Y is equal to the value in the row header. Notice that if all the probabilities in the table are added together, we get 1. We can thus sample from the joint distribution using an algorithm that is similar to those that we have used to sample single random variables. In other words, we could generate a uniform continuous random variable between 0 and 1. We then take that range between 0 and 1 and divide it up into segments that have lengths that are equal to the various probabilities in the table, as shown here. If our uniform continuous random variable u falls within the blue segment, which has length 0.1, x and y will be set equal to 1. If, by contrast, u falls within the green segment, x will be set equal to 1, while y will be set equal to 0. We continue with this process of ascribing segments of the line to various probabilities in our joint probability mass function table, as shown here. The value of the two random variables is then decided based on the segment of the line that the continuous random variable u falls within. The way that this would be coded within Python is shown here. This line here creates a two-dimensional Python array to hold the joint probability mass function. To visualize this two-dimensional array, think about the table that is shown at the top of the slide. Two indices are required to specify which element of the array we would like when we use a two-dimensional array. The first of these indices tells us which row number is required while the second tells us the column number that is required. As was promised, we then generate a uniform continuous random variable between 0 and 1 here. The double loop is then used to determine what value should be returned from the program by determining the segment of the line that u falls into, as was discussed on the previous slide. In the first pass through the loop, tt is set equal to 0.1, i.e. the 0, 0 element of the joint probability mass function that is stored in the numpy array called jp mass. The if statement here is thus determining if we are in the blue segment of the line. On the second pass through the loop, the circled element of the joint probability mass function is added to the variable tt. The if statement is thus determining if u has fallen into the green segment of the line, as shown here. On the third pass through the loop, the circled element of the probability mass function is added to the variable tt. The if statement is thus determining if u has fallen within the yellow segment of the line, shown here. Furthermore, this third pass through the loop ends the first pass through the inner loop. In the fourth pass through the double loop, i is thus reset to 1 and j reverts back to 0. We thus add the circled element of the joint probability mass function, that is shown here, to the variable tt and test if the random variable has fallen within the orange segment section of the segmented line. This process continues until we identify the segment of the line that the uniform continuous random variable u has fallen into. At that point, the if statement is triggered and the return is executed. Notice that two variables appear after the return statement that, that ends the program, and that these two variables are thus returned to the calling code. 
When we call the function, we must call it with two variables on the left-hand side of the assignment operator, the equal sign, as shown here. And that is all there is to it. In the exercises, you will have an opportunity to write code like this yourself. Good luck with that, and as always, thank you for your attention.